Hello everyone, Commander Simlex here, and welcome to Star Trek Online. This video will be a guide to the new kit system that was introduced in Delta Rising. And, of course, welcome to Earth Space Dock. And let's get right to it. For new players, the kits will most likely start at requisitions in the personal equipment vendor, but I will get to that in a moment. In the old kit system, you had kits like these that are currently in my inventory. They were set kits with set abilities that you could not change. They were just there. You could equip them. You could do missions with them, but you couldn't change them. So if you liked one ability out of the various abilities in a kit, you still had to have the one kit. So it led to many people using kits that they didn't really like all that much but they just wanted to use it because of the one ability in it. Now, this all changed, of course, with the new kit system that uses kit modules and kit frames. Now, of course, once you get to requisitions and to the personal equipment vendor, We'll then want to talk to Lessa over here. Hello. And then go to requisition kits. She sells the basic kit frames and kit modules for engineering, science, and tag for really cheap prices. When you go searching around for kit frames and modules on the exchange or on the dilithium, or, well, actually, they don't have a dilithium store anymore, so on the exchange, you will find that some of them are quite expensive. For instance, a beam turret module can run up 400,000, or at least I saw that at one point. It was 400,000 energy credits, maybe even upwards a million for some modules, or even more than that. So searching around can get quite expensive, so the basic kit modules are quite cheap at the moment, or are quite cheap, set price. Now in the case of kit frames, they have different distributions of module slots. In this case, um, you have three fabrication and one mechanic module slot. And then there's this other kit, which is more equally distributed, with a with two fabrication slots and two mechanic slots, with a total of four slots in each one of these basic kits at level nine. They are, of course, just common kits, and as with all other or all items in Star Trek Online, or most items in Star Trek Online, I should say, they do increase in rarity. For instance, this Undyne kit that I have in my inventory, which has a willpower buff, which increases my character's willpower by 73.1 and has five slots. And also has a slot that can fit either fabrication or mechanic. Now, I realize that I have been talking mainly about engineering, but I am an engineer, and my character is an engineer after all. But in the case of science, you have kits that have a medic and a research slot, and for tactical, you have strategic and assault slots. Now, in the case of these slots, each type of slot can fit a different kind of module for, and because I'm an engineering character, as previously stated, I will go for the engineering modules to show you guys. In the case of engineering, you have fabrication slots and mechanic slots. 
or combo slots that can fit both. But we'll just keep, we'll just go with um, slots that can fit either one. So for fabrication slots, it's sort of self-explanatory. You can get shield generators, beam turrets, quantum mortars, and and uh, seeker drones, for example. As those are and other fabricated emplacements. Now, in the case of the mechanic slot, you get things like that either buff you and your team, or you independently, or e debuff your enemies. So you get weapon malfunction, shield recharge, quick fix, or combat supply. Oh no, combat supply is a fabrication module. Okay. And mechanic mo and a mechanic module like fuse armor. Now, oddly enough, the mechanic modules also include chronoton mine barrier and transphasic bomb, which are actually spawned in as a fabrication, but they're mechanical. They're mechanic uh, modules, so uh, I'm not complaining. That just means that I can have a chronoton mine barrier and a transphasic bomb and have my secret drones and everything else at the same time. Now, of course, these can level up and increase in ability and in rarity and level, so it can get quite interesting. For example, I have a mechanic module level 10, very rare, which has a really high shield regeneration. Now, one of the fun things that can happen with this kit module system is you can get specialty kit modules as they can now instead of having to come up with a whole new kit for the old system they now can just create a module for the independent abilities so for example i have flash bombs from the uh, from the new delta lock boxes which is basically chronoton mine barrier with concussion grenades or mixed with concussion grenades and from the winter wonderland you can get a flash freeze bomb for the engineer which is really awesome it's basically a transphasic bomb with cold damage and you can get that until january 15th and Hopefully this will work. It is a social zone, so I'm not sure if the effect will actually work like it's supposed to, but hopefully it will. There you go. You get an icy explosion and a icy patch, just as a little demonstration for you guys. Then, one of the questions that will most likely come up is, as with the case of what happens to the older kits? Well, the older kits are, being, are just being phased out. But if you have a special kit, like for instance the Romulan um, kit, like one of the Romulan kits or one of the new Kara kits, that from the Tholian system that really, really don't want to let go or you don't want to lose, you can actually go to the vendors that you got the kit from and you can get it converted to the new kit frame, which is what I did to one of my Romulan, or to my one Romulan kit that I have. And it is right here. And it has the flamethrower turret like it did before, the seeker drone, the medical generator, the quantum mortar fabrication, all of it. It was all preserved. And you can just get these modules from the various vendors. Now, of course, you will have to go searching around. The main area where you'll be getting it is the exchange. Um, as there is no longer any dilithium stored for gear, 
or crafting it, I guess, with the new crafting system. I actually have a guide video on that, so I recommend you watch that. And that is essentially the new system. It just allows for greater flexibility and a lot more interesting module types, as each lockbox from, I believe it was the un Undyne lockbox on, or Undyne lockbox on, will, it'll have lock or it will have lockbox kit modules, which people do put on the exchange, that is how I got the flash box, and it is just a lot more interesting uh, kit modules. And that about concludes this video, so please like and subscribe and comment on this video, and feel free to share this video as it does all help my channel, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Commander Simlux, out!